Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Prime Minister Skerritt wants to focus on mental, social and emotional well-being of students as Cabinet considers a blended approach to a resumption of face-to-face -face learning. The Companies and Intellectual Property Office moves to the second stage of its digitization process and an expansion of the cynical playing field expected to stimulate sports development across the Salibia constituency. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the war is from shore. None of that out there. And it's my daily bread. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellow fin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before, because whenever you go out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me, and I bring good quality fish ashore simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. Discussions are being held at the cabinet level for a blended approach to instruction in the coming weeks. An announcement was made by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt on his Anupale program to reincorporate face-to-face -face learning at all levels of the education system. Though online learning was implemented as a safer environment for students, the benefits of in-person learning goes beyond academic performance. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt says focus must be placed on students' social and emotional skills as well as their mental health. Students need to be able to interact in a safe and stimulating environment to develop their social and cognitive skills. Our schools serve as safe zones for students and as a gateway for all other social intervention and support that can only be provided through direct contact and interaction with students. The Ministry of Education has undertaken extensive work in considering the school context as it relates to population, classroom size and recreation space. Schools will accommodate students by grade levels based on overall population size while adhering to the recommended social distancing requirements. Primary schools with a smaller student population with, with adequate classroom space for the stipulated social distancing will conduct face-to-face -face instructions from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for three days per week, Mondays to Wednesdays, and online sessions two days per week on Thursdays and Fridays. At primary schools, um, considered medium size with adequate space for the stipulated social distancing protocols, students from grades K to 3 will attend face-to-face -face sessions three days per week, Monday to Wednesday while students from grade four to six will attend face-to-face -face sessions two days per week on Thursdays and Friday. And For primary schools considered large, grades three, five, and six will attend face-to-face -face sessions two days per week, Mondays and Tuesdays, and students of uh, K to grade two will attend sessions two days per week on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Students of grade four will attend face-to-face -face sessions on Fridays only. Students from each form at the secondary level will attend face-to-face -face sessions one day per week from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And, and the following schedule will apply. From five, Mondays. From four, Tuesdays. From three, Wednesdays. From two, Thursdays. And from one, Fridays. And of course, schools will uh, strategize accordingly to accommodate students so as to ensure appropriate social distancing protocols protocol is observed. In the case of the Dominica Grammar School and the Goodwill Secondary School, 
The Goodwood Secondary School will also operate a morning shift, uh, seeing space at the Dominica Grammar School permits for such accommodation. The Ministry of Education has prepared a detailed operational manual for the blended education program, as well as guidelines for the safe operations of schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. And these guidelines reinforce the safety and hygiene protocols, as well as procedures for social distancing, uh, temperature checks, and the cleaning of surfaces. A detailed operational manual for the blended education program, as well as guidelines for the safe operations of schools during the COVID-19 pandemic has been prepared by the Ministry of Education. Prime Minister Skyde believes the phased approach will allow for a complete assessment in order to determine a total return to face-to-face -to -face learning. In the meantime, our teachers, parents and students are certainly giving of their best in this less than ideal situation. This pandemic continues to highlight the critical importance of teachers in our society. The teacher's role has taken on even greater significance in light of the challenges they have faced during the COVID-19 crisis. I take this opportunity to sincerely uh, commend our teachers and principals for their efforts in the past months to ensure that our children remain engaged. We are fully aware of the pressures they face as they strive to keep students interested and on task. Registrar of the Companies and Intellectual Property Office, Ms. Athlin Nesty, says from June 2016, CIPO transitioned to an automated e-registry that is an online business registry. The e-registry is used by external users and the CIPO for the registration and processing of companies' business name registration and for post-registration processes by the Inland Revenue Department and the Dominica Social Security. The services for the registration of companies and business names are performed via an automated system, which is called the e-registry. The transaction to complete registration is twofold. There is the e-filing process, where the documents are filed online. Nevertheless, the same documents, the hard copies, are thereafter filed at CIPO. Notably, the paper certificates, the hard copies, are still issued currently to clients. Moreover, all payments are to be made at CIPO at this stage. Customers are still required to bring in hard copies of their documents printed to the e-registry. Additionally, the public is informed that in 2021, CIPO is in the process of advancing the second stage of the digitization process with the assistance and the support of the Compete Caribbean and Inter-American Development Bank. We intend to have our services fully digitized and to, to include the avenue of the e-payment services. The service is already used, being used by the government of Dominica and will be soon incorporated into our services. In the second phase of this project, we are also working on the interoperability of the process of registration with the Inland Revenue Division. In other words, we are trying to create, or we are going to create, a one-stop shop. This is all in an effort to ease business registration. The registrar informed that in the second phase of this project, documents will be safeguarded and ensures that the hard copies are uploaded onto an e-registry. This will ease business for customers, whereas we don't have to go and look for documents. We can just file the or present you with this document from our automated system. These services, we have observed, are much needed in these challenging times. In 2021, the compliance unit was added to the office. This unit was formed as a result of international and domestic obligations. The unit is primarily engaged in ensuring legislative compliance of all registered legal entities. This unit also works closely with all other legal agencies such as the Financial Services Unit and the Inland Revenue. At this stage, I would like to take the opportunity to advise all legal entities that they are mandated to file legislatively prescribed documents every year 
and pay their prescribed fees. Failure to do so would render the businesses to be struck off the register. In this regard, CEPO will be issuing notices to all registered entities to inform them of their legal obligations, including the payments of fees owed and the documents to be filed. The Dominica Bureau of Standards is committed to ensuring food safety for all citizens. Under the Fresh Produce Export Quality Control Act, the Bureau of Standards established a certification scheme called DOMGAP. Dom Dominica Good Agricultural Practices is a national program that caters for the certification of agricultural products, processes and systems against internationally recognized fresh produce standards such as Global Gap. Domgap inspections and farm visits begin on the 1st of June 2018. This activity is done in all seven agricultural regions currently by the four farm assurers of the Dominica Bureau of Standards. Some of the activities conducted during farm visits include but not limited to updating farm management record keeping books, field assessment and monitoring, field husbandry, technical support and advice to the farmers. To date, 2,853 visits have been conducted. Director of the Bureau, Mr. Median Larocque, says this figure has been increasing over the years due to the increased number of farmers in the program. For example, in 2018, we did 695 visits. In 2019, we did 369. In 2020, we did 708 farm visits. And last year, we did a total of 1,081 farm visits. This brought us to the 2,853 I just mentioned. The second phase of the DOMGAP certification is the audit process, which is conducted after the farms are prepared for DOMGAP certification. At the Bureau, the audits began in February of 2020. Some of the activities that are conducted and focused on six pillars in the certification are record keeping, environmental protection, worker health and safety, traceability, agrochemical use, personal hygiene, and food safety. There are three levels of DOMGAP. We have level three, which includes the training certificates, farm records, PPEs, and the chemical mixing pit. Level two, everything I mentioned in level one, and the farm infrastructure. And level one includes everything that I mentioned plus the standard operation procedures, the SOPs. Presently, 20 audits have been conducted by our auditors, and we have the first 10 farmers that have been certified, representing a total acreage of 59 acres. We did 2020, we did nine audits. 2021, we did nine audits. And this year, we already started with two audits. The Dominica Bureau of Standards is responsible for developing, establishing, maintaining and promoting standards for improving industrial development, industrial efficiency, promoting the health and safety of consumers as well as protecting the environment, food and food products, the quality of life for citizenry and the facilitation of trade. You are watching National Focus. More when we return.
Welcome back. Dominica to commission a new eye care department providing a comprehensive package of outpatient and surgical services by July 2022. This goal was brought much closer to reality this week with the donation of 80,000 EC dollars worth of eye and heart care equipment from the People's Republic of China. With the new equipment donation to the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, coupled with the innovations in, diagno in diagnosing eye conditions, the eye care department is hoping to make greater strides in dealing with issues such as diabetic retinopathy. CEO of the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, Dr. Dexter James, says the department is well on its way to fulfilling its vision as a center of excellence in eye care. It was only a few months ago that the department collaborated with researchers from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in a landmark research study that successfully validated the use of artificial intelligence as a viable screening tool for diagnosing diabetic retinopathy in patients with diabetes. This achievement will undoubtedly expand access to more efficient and cost-effective screening of patients across health districts in Dominica, and in so doing, allow for faster treatment of patients with diabetic retinopathy and mitigate avoidable blindness. The next steps will require the development of protocols, the training of staff at the health districts, and procurement of specialized cameras and software. Dr. Hazel Schillingford Ricketts heads a team of three qualified ophthalmologists on staff. She says with the new facility will come increased access to eye care for the public. Currently, we are still operating in the main operating theater where we are provided with just one day a week to operate. So the three ophthalmologists have to use, share the one day a week to operate. But now in the new eye theater, we can operate five days or even six days a week if we include Saturday. So this will be a great improvement to access to eye surgery by our Dominican patients and persons who may choose to come here for surgery. The donation of medical equipment is one more example of continued cooperation in health between Dominica and China, a partnership which continues during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Pan Zhaoui is head of economic and commercial affairs and first secretary of the Chinese embassy. He noted that medical teams from China have fought side by side with Dominican colleagues on the front line of the fight against COVID-19 pandemic and jointly served many Dominican people achieving gratifying results. Due to the pandemic, China, like Dominica and other countries in the world, is facing huge challenges, including financial difficulties. So I'd like, I would like to take this opportunity to sincerely wish with the united fight of all doctors in Dominica, China, and all over the world, the pandemic will be contained and end soon. All the people in Dominica, China, and all over the world can live a normal life. May the friendship between our two countries last forever. May the cooperation between our two countries in the medical field can benefit more Dominican people. Thank you. An expansion of the cynical playing field will encourage sports development across the Salibia constituency. Member of Parliament for the Salibia constituency, Honorable Kozia Frederick, says this project will benefit constituents who are already engaged in various sporting disciplines. We do cricket as one of the main sports, but also um, a, lot of, a lot of youth are, are involved in, in, in football, soccer. So the intention is to expand this park to make it a, to make it a, a park that is able to accommodate bigger activities. We had a very successful um, um, softball league run here, the Sinico Softball League. It was managed um, by, by the by the Sinico Sports Committee. So we do have an organisation working with, and as a parliamentary representative, I find it important to extend the park so it can accommodate bigger games. So what we have done, we have partnered with the DVRP project, uh, which which is now building the road through the Carnago space, and so the excess soil from the project. We are, we are bringing it on the, on the field. And so it's a double whammy for us. We are benefiting from the road coming through, and we also benefit from the, 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 the soil that we can, we can fill out the entire area. Honorable Frederick is hoping to assume a second phase of this project once the surfacing works is completed.
It's a big park, and so hoping at the end of all of this, we, we will move from just the service in the park to, to adding um, washroom facilities and other, uh, other relevant um, bits and pieces of, of sport infrastructure so that the youth here could, could participate wholesomely in, in cricket and, and soccer. And also, um, there are there's a, a number of young people in that hamlet who are, who are involved in athletics, long distance runners, etc. So it will be a wonderful space. I'm excited as a pilot to be part of this movement and to partner with Sotridom and the, the Senior Development Committee and more importantly to partner with the youth to ensure that they have a, a, a very um, progressive and very um, um, comfortable sporting space within their community. Negotiations have been ongoing with landowners to acquire additional property on the borders of the field. Sport on a whole um, um, help with, 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 with um, discipline. It helps also with, with uh, keeping healthy and uh, we realize that um, even within the constructs of the COVID-19 pandemic we can still social distance in certain sporting activities. So we want to ensure that um, we can build unity and, and, and social development, uh, health and also just, just do, do some of the, 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 the skill sets that are important to, to have a, a thriving and, and very um, progressive community. Fencing of the playing field forms part of the project as a concern for the safety of all constituents. We are going as far as we can go in terms of the land space, so we are hoping that within the next three months or so we will complete the, 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 the surfacing, we will regrass and start building the other infrastructures. Um, so we are hoping that um, by, by the new financial year, um, parts of that um, request will be within the constructs of the, of the budget and that we can develop that space. And we are also doing a parallel development in, in Jolly Jones Park. And so as the road works keep, keep expanding down, we will move off into that place so we can have a, a bigger park and that can accommodate a much, much um, bigger sporting events. The drive towards the enhancement of community sports across the island was announced a few years ago and has made significant strides with the upgrading of playing fields and courts. We open to the vegetational um, periphery fence, which we we we, we work with the, the division of forestry and wildlife and park to do not just a concrete fence, but to do something that is vegetation. So we do we'll do some plants, we we'll do vetiver. So all of this will be will be inculcated into the project. So we'll have partial um, vegetation fence and partial maybe some concrete works and some fence in itself, because as you as you it, it has a big drop. Um, at a certain part of the field, so we want to ensure that we can do that. Something that is nice and, and something that, that, that leans, and especially I see it as, as the Minister of Environment to make sure we have a, a nice ambience. So it will not just be a normal park, it will be a, a sort of a wellness area where people can come and, 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 and do their yoga and, and do all sorts of activities. The Honourable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has congratulated Barbados' Prime Minister, the Honourable Mia Armour Motley, after her Barbados Labour Party won a second five year term at the 19th January general election. Prime Minister Skerritt says Mia Motley's party secured a decisive win at the snap election as the Barbados Labour Party took the reins of government for another five years, winning all 30 electoral seats. For the second straight election, the Barbados Labour Party won with a clean sweep of the 30 seats in the parliament. In the midst of a pandemic, this is a sure sign that the people of Barbados hold Miss Motley in high esteem and are confident of a party's ability to effectively lead the country during these challenging times. Barbados, like every other country, needs strong leadership at this time, which is proven and tested. I believe the people of Barbados understood that the task of economic recovery following the impact of COVID-19 could only be entrusted to a proven, capable leader. They have reposed confidence in Ms. Motley and her team, and I wish her well as she continues the work of leading Barbados through this pandemic. That's all for the English version of the news. Shakira Pierre John is next with Creole Highlights. <laughs> Premier Ma, Premier Ministre, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt announces a protocol that he approved for event special at Dominique. Event février pour Premier Ma, ce qui indique comment se manier l'autre secteur à l'économie de Dominique, a une manière qui est safe. Ces activités là qui prend place à des sites seulement, ça c'est un Old Mill Cultural Center là et puis à Windsor Park Sports Stadium là pour moun qui prend des doses vaccins là. Windsor Park Sports Stadium la ke plasta tout se pli gwo aktivite la ke pon plas epi ke akomode 600 moun ki anteresan an se aktivite sa la. 
à Old Mill Cultural Center là et qui est activité virtuelle et puis qui accommode des samoun. Tout le monde qui a pris part à ces activités là, le monde qui a travaillé à ces activités là, et puis le monde qui a performé à ces activités là, si posé pour des doses n'importe vaccin la gouvernement qui a ouvert. Ces gars là neuf là dit c'est une ces activités qui est pris place par jour et puis pas ça courir plus long que six mois et tant. Il peut que les pièces mon assiché mais qui a couru mars, il peut que les pièces carnaval en village et mes pièces groupe monde pas ça à une place. En même temps là, monde qui veut chaîne activité yo yo ka encourager yo pour plein application yo pour yo taper permis. Pour mes ministère à si république là qui gouvernement veut faire toute bagaille aller bon et puis il et puis ces activités ça là à sous le 28 février et puis le 1er mars, ces activités là qui ka prend place à Fort Court Windsor Park Stadium là et puis que courir au désert pour huit heures le soir. Premier ministre dit qu'il y a une calypso show et qu'il y a aussi pour place et puis Stardom King of the Tent, Mass Camp et puis Calypso Finals. Il y a un qualifié si il y a un dos vaccin là et puis à Cass Johnson et puis Johnson là, il y a un dos. Si le vaccin là approuve par le ministre Santé là et puis World Health Organization là et puis il y a une semaine et puis il y a un vaccin là. Ces vaccins là qui approuvent, c'est Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, Johnson et Johnson et puis Sinopharm. Pour mes ministres là, dit c'est mon agent ticket pour aller à ces activités là, y en a pour taper hors monde qui a organisé ces activités ça là. Y a qu'à vendre ces tickets là par monde qui n'y ont bon ID, détail et puis pour vaccination. En même temps là, monde qui n'y ticket ni pour mener y ont antigen test qui est négatif, qui est au point 24 Nelita avant l'activité là. Ces mises là ont été développées pour poursuivre les directives pour changer ces activités là en tant que carnaval là. On a besoin de dire après ces activités là, le gouvernement a une meilleure manière pour savoir comment pour changer les activités à Dominique. Permission la gouvernement va pour changer ces activités là, c'est pour le secteur salarié en boost en tant que COVID là. En d'autres nouvelles, Bureau of Standards Dominique a fait commitment pour faire certains manger bien safe par tous les citoyens. En bas, ACLA pour export produits qui font le Bureau of Standards là établi un scheme pour certification de la DOMGAP. DOMGAP, c'est un programme national qui a fait provision pour certification de produits agricoles, jardin, les gens qui travaillent en jardin là et puis système qui pour aller et puis standards pour produits qui font global GAP. Monsieur Median Larox, le directeur Dominica Bureau of Standards. Il dit que l'inspection de la jardin a commencé en l'année 2018 et que l'activité a pris place en sept régions agricoles par quatre personnes qui ont une responsabilité de la Dominica Bureau of Standards. Et puis l'activité qui a pris place pendant l'activité de la c'est assessment de la si pour technical et puis avis pour planter. Pour date, 2800 et puis 53 visites j'ai faites en jardin à Dominique. Le directeur là dit que ce numéro là a monté en l'année qui passait quand d'autres plantes ont enregistré pour le programme là. En l'année 2018, le bureau là fait 695 visites. En l'année 2019, il fait 369 visites. En l'année 2020, il fait 708 visites. Et puis, en l'année passée, il fait 1081 visites pour planter à Dominique. Deuxième degré là pour Domgap, c'est le process audit. Là, il y a place après ces jardins là préparé pour certification Domgap. En bureau là, audit là commencé en l'année 2020. Et puis, l'activité qui a mené focus à la protection de l'environnement là, et puis, comment pour la chaîne manger bien safe. Bureau of Standards là, ni responsabilité pour développer, établir et puis promouvoir une manière pour enhancer le développement industriel, efficiency industrial, et puis pour aussi promouvoir la santé pour bon tes citoyens, et puis aussi pour protéger l'environnement là, manger et puis produire manger, qualité la vie des citoyens, et puis pour faciliter l'État. Ça, c'est tout pour Nouvelle Ancréole. Non, moi, c'est Shakira Pierre John. Au revoir. And now, your weather update. A high pressure system is expected to result in a relatively dry atmosphere across the island as the day progresses. 
Occasional cloudiness with a few showers can be expected across the interior and eastern sections of the island during the next 24 hours. Moderate seas are anticipated during the next 24 hours with waves peaking near 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers along the east coastline should exercise some caution. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here at the GIS News Production Team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching and remember to stay safe. Thank you.